All right, so here we're going to be talking about an automatic door opener and door closer. So here, I, why don't you hold that and then you can show everybody our, we're going to show people how, how to make it work for the battery. It's like a really simple battery here. And we're going to, so you can see how it shows below. See how it opens. And then if we reverse these wires, come here and show it up here. So when we reverse these wires, now it's going to, it's going to close. There we go. started on our video let's just talk about what are some of the middle of materials that we're going to need and um, the first thing is is that you need to measure the height of your door uh, this is called the stroke length and the stroke length is for your actuator you can run one two ten it doesn't really matter how many actuators it kind of does but you I have two actuators in my setup. You can see uh, this one is measured and the mounting location for the actuator is actually uh, right there on the left side. As far as the actuators go, you need a 12 volt actuator. Um, and you can see this one's from Amazon. This one is a 12 volt, 12 inch linear actuator. As long as you get something like that, you'll probably be good. Um, some things to note here, these are ones by home end, they're inexpensive. Uh, they need to have, what's important on these linear actuators is they have limit switches on them. Uh, you need a good battery. Uh, I chose a really small uh, lead acid battery. Uh, this one's chrome, this is 23 bucks. It's really inexpensive. You can push the button on the top and check out the voltage level. Um, this is just the one I used. You can get whichever battery you want. You don't need a humongous battery because you are going to be recharging it every day with the solar panel. Uh, one of the next items here is the DIN slotted rail. Um, I choose this as a mounting bracket for the, um, the timers and also the uh, circuit breaker that I use. It just makes for a nice clean installation. Here are the timers. I use the Bauman uh, THC 15 amp DC 12 volt digital LCD programmable timer switch. Uh, it's actually a relay. Uh, you'll need two. You need one as an up timer and one as a down timer. We're going to get to the kind of why you need two, but you must order two of these things. And we're going to show how how you actually uh, wire these up in just a moment. Um, I use a circuit breaker. Um, I also have a fuse on mine because we don't want the battery just discharging uh, into the system. Uh, if there's a short, let's say, if a uh, chicken or somebody else is picked into a wire, we don't want to kill them. Uh, it's best to protect as much as you can in there. Uh, I use a circuit breaker as well as a fuse as well. Uh, this is the... Um, rechargeable part of this whole thing. This is a polycrystalline um, uh, MPPT controller, uh, kind of two-piece job. It's super inexpensive. It's $28. Uh, but you, when you do this, you want a charge controller as well as the, the panel. That way it doesn't overcharge the battery. Uh, and it just keeps the battery at the right level. Um, it cost about another eight bucks to do this. Totally worth it. Uh, instead of just like trying to hook up a panel directly to a battery, that's just not a great idea. Um, so this is this is the mix here. This is the schematic. Uh, just kind of help everybody out here. This is the timer here. Um, the timer here is there's the one and two pins here. One and two. And then it goes three, four, five. Um, and what I've done here is I've labeled each part of the diagram 
accordingly. So let's start off with the timer here. The timer is uh, connected to the three pin, which is a normally connected pin. It's connected to zero. And since I'm using two timers, one for up and one for down, they're both connected to zero. That's the number three pin. It's connected to the negative side or the zero of the battery. As far as the positive side, the positive side is connected to the normally open side. And we do that to both timers. So the plus 12 is connected to pin number five right there. Also, uh, just to note, we connect the positive or the plus 12 to the number one and the negative to the number two. This is the power for the timer itself. So if you see, we actually are running two different wires, plus and minus two to the, to the timer. So there's a total of four wires connected to each timer. Uh, and then the number four wire here is the one that we're actually going to be connecting to the linear actuator. And we connect both number fours to the linear actuator. Linear actuator may have like green and brown, red and black. And depending on the polarity, uh, you'll find that basically what this does is this reverses the polarity one way or the other, and it will cause the linear actuator to either extend or retract. And uh, the way this kind of works is simple. Let's say if we wanted to do up, well, the normally connected part here is connected to zero, and it goes down. The current flows right through there, and it kind of stops here. Then it would kind of continue on here. Then you would see that it goes back to zero. So the normal state for this guy is everything is off. And we want that because it's just a safer mode of operation. And then we're ready for, uh, let's say, extending it out. Then we connect up the 12 volt, the five, which it's already connected. But we just flip this over here. We do that with the timer. We can do that either using the manual button here or by programming it. And so let's just say that we use the manual button. Now this guy is going to connect over here. It's going to disconnect over there. So we have five volts here. And five or 12 volts here, and it connects up to number four. Then we have to plus 12 on this side, and we still have the zero on that side, and it causes this actuator to extend. Once it extends to its maximal length, it will stop, it will hit the limit switch. At that time, I usually run my timer for two minutes total, and then I have it shut off. Uh, there's no reason to leave it at plus, plus 12. It does not hurt anything but it just gives an opportunity for a chicken or something else to to eat the wire and cause an, a, uh, a fire or some other problem. So what I do is I just go ahead and, and just turn that off. And then at that point, then uh, it goes back to the same state that we're in. To run the down timer, it's the exact same process. We connect up to 12 volts through the number five, and this guy comes up here disconnects from there. The 12 volts comes down through here, down to the number four, and goes into the linear actuator. Now this time it's plus 12 over here, minus over here, and the current flows in reverse. And it causes the actuator to now retract. This is also, so at this point, we understand how the timers work, both timers, the up timer and the down timer. You can connect them up. Uh, uh, and not know which is the up timer and the down timer. And then at the very end, the last step, just write them on a marker on top of it. This is up timer and down, so you know which one's which. Uh, to connect up the solar panels, really straightforward. There's a solar panel, there's a red and a black wire. You connect those up to where it's a solar panel. Then the battery, you connect up to the red and the black. And then you connect that into your battery. And at this point, uh, during the day, that red charge light will come on until it doesn't, which means that's fully charged, and then it will go off. And that's how this whole system works. So now you can have, kind of have an off-grid chicken coop with an automatic door. It'll cost you about $130 or so, 140 bucks to do the whole thing. Uh, you're going, you might need some extra wire, some extra clips. I use um, just some real simple wire caps to connect up the wires if I need to extend any wire. 
Uh, and that's it. Enjoy the video. Um, and you can kind of see how it's all put together. All right. Remember, I'm going to have you close the door here in a second. All right, chickens and ducks, time to go. Look at all these chickens. Come on, guys. Or ladies. I know. Out the door. Out. I know. Oop. There you go. Hey, hey now. <laughs> I think she picked up the uh got the GoPro, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna show you we have this door here. You don't have to go crazy and zoomy. And then it's connected to a rope. And then it opens and closes. And yes, there are chickens back there. This actually comes up over here, over here. You can come here, hike. You can see it. This goes, when I pulled it down. But this goes this way, and then it would just open up the door. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace that. Okay, now that we have our parts, we have our mounting brackets. We have some pins. We have some cotter pins. We're going to reuse the screws, at least some of them. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this here. And Amber, go ahead and stick a pin through there. Nope, the pin. That's a cotter pin. Made to require two hands. And then we're going to go ahead and hold this up here, Amber. You're going to hold that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle part. Get out the bottom. Ike, if you want to video this. And I want to move you up a little bit, Amber. There you go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this thing straight up and down-ish. We reattach that with the right size washer. Amber, is that straight up and down ish? Okay, you can let go. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. So now we're going to install this guy up here at the top. We're going to stick the first pin through. Amber, why don't you stick that pin through? Where? You'll see. Alright, so now we got our screws here. We're just gonna make sure that they're not too long. Kind of look at the length of them here. Looks okay. Alright, Amber, you got that straight up and down now? Is that good? Alright, so now we're gonna install this guy in here. Alright, go ahead and Amber, check out the pin. I'm going to pull this thing back. I'm just going to let it rest for a second. And then we're going to install another screw here. All right. And we'll go ahead and uh, put that pin back in it. This cotter pin, we're just going to gently put it through. Why don't you go ahead and put it through on the bottom too, and then just bend it back a little bit. Not a whole lot. We don't need it. Just about like that, okay? So the down part, I think, is the plus side here, which is the extension. We're going to hook that up. And the worst thing that we have to do is just reverse them, so it doesn't really matter because we labeled these things already. So let's go ahead and put this on the middle pin. Okay. 
Put it on there nice and good. Okay, and then we're going to grab the other one. We're going to put it right here in the middle. Okay, so now we have it in the middle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up, we're going to get some more wire out. We're going to hook up the negatives to the normally connected and the positives to number five, which are the connected side. We're going to take four wires because we stripped off these four copper looking wires. We're going to kind of squish them together. We're going to put them inside this breaker panel. And then Amber use that red. Double check. So we didn't get that one in there good enough. See, that's why we have to to make sure that we when we put these things in there, we have to really kind of tighten them down. You can kind of get them the first little tight, and then I'll just tighten them up. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is, so this is the positive that comes off that. And then we need to connect up the positives into, we're going to take this kind of off, but we're going to connect them up so one and one need positives. And then we're going to use the longer cables for those. So these two are longer ones. Let's go ahead and do those, Amber. So you're going to screw them into the ones. Okay. So the one. Okay. And then this is another longer one, I think. So we're going to screw this into the another number one spot. This is too long here. I don't know why it's too long. There we go. These little DIN panels are great. Kind of holds everything on there. Twenty-seven percent. You don't need to give me an update. Okay. When it's at zero, then I'll, I'll need it. Okay, so we got our up downs there. And then we need to put our power in to the number five, Zamber. Because this is where we're going to put the power. Okay. This one right here. There. Put that on there. It's not strip it though. There you go. Looks good. Alright, so now we're ready for number three which is the negative which is coming off of here we don't have we can't just like put them all we actually have to do just like we did here except for we're not going to come off with a breaker okay so now we need to work on the next part of the battery what we're going to do is we're going to do like what electricians do the chicken is telling us we need to do the same thing what we're going to do is we're going to run them all into a red wire nut and then this way, you got to focus in on that. And then <laughs> what we can do is we can just put this on the battery and then we have kind of four terminals coming off of it. This kind of makes it a little bit better. All right, Amber, what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the number two terminals. 
on all the tops because these are just the wire hanging out. All right. Now I know it's probably difficult to tell but some of this wire is, let's not strip it, is, is copper and the other part is like the silver color makes it easier. We're just kind of repurposing some old speaker wire that I had. Actually it even said Radio Shack on it which is really old. Okay so now this is the boomer stuff. I'm not a boomer neighbor. Oh but you're close. No I'm 30 years off from it. Close? <laughs> close. Yeah. I'm 60 years off from that. I'm 61. Mm -hmm. Cut this back a little Ding bit. Back. My temples are itchy. Okay. Ready, Amber? We're going to put this uh -huh. in. So this is going to now go on the number. Hey, it's going to go in the number three section here. So let's go ahead and put that on there and screw that in there. Screw you, that in you, there. You took my screwdriver. No, I didn't. Yeah. You said in here and I was like, uh, okay. There you go. Mm. Let's put our tools in the same spot. There we go. And then after a while we'll dress all these in and make it look nice. Doesn't look like mad scientist work. Oh, we can just leave it there, it's fine. No, we can't. Why not? Because that's not the way you do things. The way I do things. Well, then the way you do things will be a total mess. No, because one person needs to understand it. It's you. Well, I want to make sure I can see it. All right. So now we have everything all squared away. And I think we are ready to attempt to plug this into the battery terminal. What we're going to do is we're going to connect up the red to the red, which is the battery lead. We're going to connect up the black to the black here. And Amber, why don't you show how, as we turn this already to the on position, go ahead and show how we can, this one's labeled what? Up, okay. down, flip. And what are you going to do? One, two, that's on. Look at that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for the chicken box so I get in. Oh, I'm going to turn it to the off button. Okay, and now we're going to turn it. Chicken! Chicken! Some bird! I swear I'm going to smack you. Oh, Lord. Okay. This is a mess. 